so for anybody who knows me, you probably know I'm not the absolute biggest achievement person, not the biggest completionist, not really the best when it comes to like completion percentage. I'm, on my, I'm obviously on true achievements. It makes things easier to track. But if you look at my gamer score, I think I'm in like the 220,000 range. You know, it's, it's really good compared to the average person, but it's not anything to brag about. And last year in particular, I probably went harder on achievements than I ever have in my life. So I think I threw down about 110,000 gamer score, somewhere around that. And the thing is, I just wanted to highlight two in achievements in particular that pretty much almost broke me. So these were games I was trying to complete. I love ID at Xbox games. I'm huge on the indie games. They're awesome. There's a lot of stuff I love to play. And I've always been really bad about dabbling. But last year, I was trying to make an effort to actually complete some stuff. So here are two games in particular and two achievements and why I think they're kind of toxic in just the way they're designed. And I would love to hear what kind of achievements you guys personally absolutely hate. Like, I know there's a bunch of them out there, whether or not it's, you know, leaderboard type content or something else like that. I'd love to hear in the comments what it is that really just kind of breaks you. But for me in particular, and there is a reason why I'm wearing this hat. <laughs> I just happen to love baseball. I loved Super Mega Baseball. It was a fantastic game. So if you have not played it, hopefully you did download it when it's free with Games with Gold. It's really, really good. So Super Mega Baseball is a great game. It has some very difficult achievements. Last time I looked on True Achievements, it was worth about like 9,000 True Achievement points. It's been a while since I looked, so it may have finally decayed a little bit, but that game was pretty high up there. So what that means is a lot of these, a lot of people played it, but very few people have unlocked everything. I'm one of the few people that has unlocked everything. And the thing is, there are some difficult achievements, but those weren't the problem. I didn't mind having to play at 99 Ego. In fact, I was actually pretty excited about the fact that there was one for that. You know, to me, that was cool. It was like, okay, this is a skill-based achievement. I get to show off that I actually can pull this off. The one that nearly broke me was purely RNG-based. So, basically, the way it worked was you had to continue to play and to continue to earn star points and as you earn star points you would unlock uh, new items which you'd be able to equip to your characters to give them better stats now the problem with the achievement more than anything though is you could beat the entire game otherwise really early on if you if you had the skill it was not going to take you that long if you had to go for this one though you had to grind it out no matter what it doesn't matter how good you are you're still grinding it out now, I was playing at like 85 Ego, 90 Ego to grind out my games. I was still scoring a ton of star points. So like I was leveling fast, but at the same time, it still took forever. And the problem was it was purely RNG based on whether or not the stats would open up for the single character I needed them to. So there were like, you know, each team basically had one character. And this was the achievement in particular that was driving me nuts is you had to have Offensive Beast. So you had to get stats of 90 in power, 90 in contact, and 90 in speed. And that was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous to do. It was ridiculously hard in the sense of it was just RNG. Like whether or not the character I needed to be able to get the stats into had the slots for the items to open up was purely luck. And to me, that's not fun. Uh, but at the end of the day, I did finally unlock it recently. I was super excited about that. And, like, it's a good feeling to have it done. At the same time, <laughs> there's no way I would have kept going if it weren't for the fact that I'd, like, made that a personal challenge to myself to beat that game. Alright, so the other game that nearly broke me down last year was called Party Hard. Now, if you've played this game, it's actually pretty fun to a point. You know, it's kind of like a a 2d hitman almost you know you go around a party you kill people i don't know <laughs> it can be pretty fun to be perfectly honest as bad as that summary for me sounded but the achievement in particular that drove me nuts was called clubber so what this was was you had to play party hard a hundred times so what that means is you've probably unlocked all the other achievements by playing the game maybe four to twelve times you know depending on how long of a sitting you're doing it 
it's not that difficult a game other than this single achievement. The rest of them, you can just kind of bust out pretty fast. This one though, you're gonna have to basically artificially open and close the game 100 times. Yeah, open and close the game 100 times. Is there a purpose to this? Does it make the gameplay better? No, there is no legitimate reason why this is an achievement. This is not difficult. It takes about an hour, 20 minutes to do, depending on how bored you are and how quick you can actually do it. For me, I practically fell asleep while doing it every single time while watching Netflix. So it probably took me a bit longer than it did someone else. But at the same time, like, why is this an achievement? This is an example of a dev who did not consider the fact that you have a pretty fun game, to be perfectly honest. But it's like, yo, your, your game is not that long. <laughs> like, let, let's be realistic here. Like, why would someone want to play this game a hundred times? They probably don't, because you're going to beat it in less than 15, you know? <laughs> And then once you beat it, like, there's not that much reason to go back to it. It was an otherwise pretty good game. Like, I mean, I personally didn't review it, so I didn't have to, like, worry about any of these issues. But, like, I would never take a score down because of a single achievement. But for me as an individual trying to complete the game, which is not something I typically do, it drove me nuts. So, Party Hard and Super Mega Baseball had two achievements last year that just absolutely drove me nuts. And I'd be curious to know what games had achievements that drove you nuts as well. Because I know there's some out there. And I know there's a lot worse examples than these two. These just happen to be two that I ran into that just honestly bugged me to no end. So thanks again, guys. Please like and share and comment on the video. It really does help us out. And we'll be doing more content like this in the next couple days. So later.